One of the most common answers I get to the question, why is it that you decided to take chemistry, is because I want to blow things up. Well, we have to remember that explosions, while spectacular if they're fireworks or contained or expected, are often disastrous because most of the time we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to avoid explosions. We're trying to avoid unpredictable chemical reactions. And we can see disastrous consequences, such as the case with the Hindenburg disaster in the 1930s, which killed over 32 people and pretty much ended the big airship era uh, worldwide. Now, we have to remember that all chemical reactions involve energy. And it's not just explosions that we have to be concerned about, but energy in general. In fact, all chemical reactions result in energy either being given off or absorbed. And the study of this energy within chemical reactions is referred to as thermochemistry. So when we deal with thermochemistry, really what we're talking about is just an energy change involved in any chemical reaction. And you might ask, well, where does this energy come from in a chemical reaction? Well, that energy is stored as chemical potential energy in the bonds of the atoms and the molecules that are involved in the reaction. And so we have to take a look at these reactions, and most of the common reactions that we think about are when energy is given off. And when energy is given off by a chemical reaction, it's because of the nature of the reactants and the products. When the energy of the reactants is higher than the energy of the products, we have a difference between the two, and that difference is given off as energy. And that's typically the most common case in our chemical reactions. And we refer to those as exothermic reactions. Energy is being given off. You can think about exothermic relating to exiting. Energy is exiting the system. In the reverse process, sometimes we have products that have a higher energy than those of the reactants. And we refer to that as an endothermic reaction, one in which energy has to be put into the system to get from the reactants to the products. Now, why is it that we have to worry about energy at all? Well, it has to do with thermodynamics. And the law of conservation of energy states that energy everywhere in the universe is constant, that it's a net sum of zero. So if we take a look at a chemical system, that is the reaction that we perform, and we take a look at the chemical surroundings or the surroundings of our chemical reaction, the two have to be equal in terms of the net overall change. So if the system gains energy, then the surroundings is going to lose energy and vice versa. Now, what is the system? Well, the system is really the chemical reaction itself. So when we write out the balanced chemical equation, that is our chemical system. And the surroundings are really everything else. So I could be on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, and it could be affected by a chemical reaction theoretically anywhere. Now, that's not likely to be the case. Most of the time when we deal with the surroundings, we're dealing with the immediate surroundings. So when we represent these chemical reactions, we have to remember that just like a balanced chemical equation, we have to equate energy in here somewhere. And we refer to these as thermochemical reactions. And if we take a look at exothermic reactions in which energy is given off, we represent this energy as what we call heat. And in an exothermic reaction, because energy is given off, heat is treated as a product. It's produced as a result of this chemical reaction. In an endothermic reaction, we treat heat as one of the reactants. So we write it on the left side of the arrow. That is, energy is required for this reaction to proceed. Now, we have ways of representing this, especially when we're dealing with specific chemical reactions, and here is a few. We have this type of chemical reaction, which includes the amount of energy released in the actual equation. So we add a plus sign and add it, in this case an exothermic reaction, to the right side of the arrow, the product side. That is, we have a magnitude of the amount of energy that is released. We can also represent it separately. And you can see here that there's something called delta H uh, naught, that's what that little degree sign is, of the reaction. And we can see here that we've included it outside the reaction itself. If it's positive, we have an endothermic process. And if it's negative, as is the case here, we have an exothermic process. And when we talk about delta H, we refer to it as the change in enthalpy, which is our sort of measuring of the difference in energies between the reactants and the products. It's just an absolute value, a difference between the amount of energy of the reactants and the amount of energy of the products. It's relative in terms of reactants and products. And we can come up with something called an enthalpy diagram to represent this change in enthalpy. Now, for a reaction such as this, which is exothermic, we are going to have reactants that are higher in energy than those of the products. For an endothermic 
reaction, the opposite would be true. We would have products that are higher in enthalpy than the reactants. Now, this enthalpy change, you will notice, doesn't have values on that left-hand side right away because all we're looking at is a difference in enthalpy between the reactants and the products. So if we take a look at this particular reaction, we can represent it here by taking the overall delta H, or change in enthalpy of this reaction, and representing it here between the two. So these are just some of the ways that we can represent these types of reactions. And it's important that you understand the difference between endothermic and exothermic and the relationship to enthalpy so that you can represent these types of reactions effectively in the two types of thermochemical equations and in your enthalpy diagram.